Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Man at YouTube with a, another model video. We'll be reviewing and looking at the build of the Macross YF19 fighter version from Macross Plus. This is a project I've purchased more than 10 years ago and attempted to write and film an entirety tutorial for my early YouTube channel 10 years ago. Uh, this model was purchased at a swap and sell in the mid 2000s and my very first attempt at resin at the historical victorian hobby center i've also purchased a big brain moment some brass landing gear to glue on to give enough stability for the model to stand yet yeah, they were definitely out of scale attempts of using squadron and various types of putty super gluing the whole fuselage together and masking where future post painting parts were applied this was released in its true sense as a garage kit made in very small quantities sold by an independent seller at an event such as wonder festival or c3 in japan and this is also the conclusion of the photos from 10 years ago you can definitely see that it was a very simplistic two-part mold model where the mold line would separate and distort the part leaving quite a gap with fitting issues and inscribed detail if so sculpted and done by hand no aid of uh, machinery or design as we do have with 3d printing in this era an additional part was the canopy a vac formed out of a pet style of plastic which is a process of heating a piece of plastic putting it over a shaped mold and uh, utilizing a vacuum source to suck it around that die each part was separated and accounted for as the instructions are very simplistic and assembled in an order of where they're likely to go the parts would also have sprues where the resin was poured into the mold it would have to be removed and cleaned up you have to be very careful to identify where the part starts and where the sprue ends as you're not removing or cutting various detail a few additional parts were included such as extra fins and a weapon for various variations and versions of this aircraft i'm only going to be imitating the box art version and sprucing up the cockpit when assembling the parts together holes were drilled with a pin vise and a little bit of wire to connect all the parts together due to the thinness and rigidity they would be glued together with super glue would leave quite a bit of a crazed uh, mess and some steps where the seam lines or the joining lines would uh, fault this would definitely come out from a primer but again this was not done until 10 years later the putties I used unfortunately were solvent based and would shrink so I would putty Sam putty and as seen in the video there were all sorts of faults riddled everywhere luckily with uh, modern modeling techniques and products on hand like dissolved putty we were able to address this by marking out the faults with a Gundam marker correcting them allowing it to dry sanding back and reinspecting with a very fine Mr. Surfacer 1500 primer mind you none of these products were available to modelers even professionals back then and they uh, had to do with uh, what I first attempted so the finished model on the box art definitely uh, props to the modeler who made that and sculpted it even though I had to go through a lot of these uh, hardships this is what uh, modeling definitely was like uh, back then and we definitely have it good today especially with the quality and the caliber of modern garage kits as I much love the charm of a mid 90s subject matter being in resin and detailed it's a lot nicer than the styrene kits that came out which were tooled and designed in an 80s format 
very chunky, not very conventional whatsoever. The issue with this scale is that the parts are far too thin for this medium, snap and break quite easily. A lot of sanding had to be employed to make a perfectly smooth surface as you would have for a well maintained uh, aircraft, then re-scribing the panels to have something deep enough to paint around when masking and uh, a panel wash to go through marking out the detail without making it look too grubby or weathered. It got to the point where some parts got so thin they snapped and had to be replaced with styrene counterpart scratch building and uh, just giving up on certain points with the process of priming and sanding. Secondly, due to how thin some areas were, mounting it on pegs were quite difficult in almost all surfaces were to be painted, which worked out for priming and touching up different areas, but made it much trickier when we're laying on paint. Luckily, I took this quite strategically, painted areas, masked it, such as the tips of the wings, and then that's where the peg would be connected. Also being mostly a white aircraft, this was the final colour to be applied, which normally you would paint white and build up your colours. Utilising silver as an undercoat reflects light and gives you the illusion of a very bright light white. So it was a lot easier to mask the smaller areas such as the tiny black lines instead of just masking the entire aircraft white with tape over it. The canopy was cut up with a ultrasonic knife, made the job very easy, PVA glue post painting. The post painting stage PVA glue was also used to assemble the rest of the components, held very well together. Uh, the trick with that is allowing a maximum amount of uh, time to dry. Working around vac formed parts was a lot of fun, it is something I would like to play around with again in the future but can respect that uh, joins is up to where I strategically cut a lot of filling will be required. The painting stage also difficult due to its scale with the amount of masking definitely did not come without any decals especially uh, UN Spacey Rondel. I believe I did buy some aftermarket decals and put them aside especially for this project however just went straight to hand painting when lifting the mask on some parts resin being resin it did lift and the re primer did not etch into the resin well enough maybe a little release fluid left over this was easily fixed through hand painting clear coats and polishing once we had an overlook of just the finished painted section and touched up small areas like the cockpit with hand painting, uh, fairly pleased how this came out. Gave it a final sludge wash coat of black to bring out all of that wonderful scribed detail and extra mechanical web of engravings and multiple coats of a gloss to seal everything and dulled it down with steps of matte to give it a very dead flat look without silvering or any issues leading to a very traditional looking vintage model people who collect and build models are always looking for a subject matter that is accurate and depicts what they see in the medium as accurately as possible in detail, gimmicks, proportion, colour and the ability to finish it. Some rather buy toys to display immediately and play with, others build models. During the 60s to the 90s, injection moulding technology was limited and modelling was targeted more as a pastime for teenagers and kids to create things from their favourite cartoons, which was enough to spend 500 yen or several dollars at the local store, glue it together, slap some paint, and it's something to appreciate and enjoy 
throw away once you don't desire anymore. Uh, for the adult appreciator who is willing to spend far more money on an artisan to sculpt, cast and release very limited runs and models, they're willing to pay a ton of money to get the piece that they desire and either invest in a lot of expensive equipment, paint and tools and the ability to build it themselves, sit on the shelf for decades without ever touching it or better pay a commission of uh, a top amount of money for an artist to make it. I could see how these styles of models were very popular during the period but you do not see them anymore as the technology of injection molded kits has increased dramatically as well as its price matching the cost of these models from a previous time. Such as this Valkyrie which I bought out of a bargain bin when the technology was going up is something we're not going to see as much anymore except for people who appreciate and want to specially build resin model kits but they're going to reflect current sculpting trends and technology that's available with resin 3D printing and something that's not so much made by hand. It is very easy to bootleg, replicate, cast a copy and sell on the market but with something this hard to build and paint it's not necessarily wanted anymore and it's not necessarily going to be seen. I see this build as a uh, historical isolation snapshot of a transition from one era of the hobby to the current end of the hobby and I thoroughly enjoyed the process with its challenges and appreciate what we have today. I also enjoy the fact that I've improved in skills from when I first started attempting this model to where I finished it now. It's not necessarily perfect but I think it's come out well enough that I can have some pride in it and display it online on social media or on the table of any model show. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. Check out the social media links down below. We're making a lot of content on our second YouTube channel, and we'll catch you guys next time. See you later.